What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation. And without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Kyle Wright, who had wicked curveballs on his way to five strikeouts and seven innings. Wright only threw 84 pitches, and 79% of them in this game were strikes. Just a really good outing by Wright. Brandon Woodruff had 9 Ks in 6 innings thanks to these fastballs and changeups. Tristan McKenzie had 4 strikeouts in 6 innings and had this pretty curveball. Johnny Cueto had 5 strikeouts in 8 innings thanks to these nasty changeups. Kyle Gibson had a wicked cutter and sinker, and the Ripper whipped out a cutter of his own and caught another body. By the way, this is kind of sick. The Ripper now has his own beer. Inspired by my Ripper nickname for John Tumpain. I love this. And yes, I am getting a case. Cutter Crawford had six Ks in five innings, thanks to his cutter. Jordan Montgomery had this wicked curveball on his way to four Ks in five and two-thirds innings. And Carlos Carrasco had this dirty slider and had five Ks in five and two-thirds innings. Patrick Sandoval had 10 Ks in six and a third innings and had his filthy combo of sliders and changeups working, gave up one run, lowering his ERA to 2.95 on the season. Dean Kramer threw five scoreless innings with seven Ks thanks to these cutters. Drew Rasmussen had these nasty sliders and had four scoreless innings and six strikeouts. He was outdueled by Hunter Green, who was outstanding. Green had nine Ks in six innings, hitting 101 several times, Here's an overlay of his fastball and slider, and you can see why that's so tough of a combo. When he's on, those pitches look the same, and there's about 10 miles an hour difference, and the slider drops out of the swing plane. Just overpowering stuff by Hunter Green. He had 38 fastballs at over 100 miles an hour. Insane. Marcus Stroman threw four scoreless innings with three Ks, thanks to his cutters and split change. He went up against Clayton Kershaw, who had one of those Kershaw outings. Kershaw had 10 Ks in seven and two thirds innings, giving up only one earned run, lowering his ERA to 2.4 on the year. His slider was disgusting. I mean, look at these things. He also, of course, had his beautiful Cooperstown curveball. Kershaw has a 37% whiff rate against his slider and a 41.7% whiff rate against that Cooperstown curveball. Here's a three-pitch overlay with Kershaw's fastball, his slider, and his curveball. And you can see the different speeds and paths those pitches take to the plate. These pitches were all from one strikeout. Robbie Ray had six strikeouts in six innings thanks to his sliders and fastballs. He went up against Alec Manoa, who had seven strikeouts in seven and a third innings and had this amazing soul-stealing two-seamer. It is really rare that you get a hitter to bail on a pitch that is middle-middle. Manoa also had these wicked sliders, and here's an overlay of his two-seamer and his slider, and you can see that slider just take off. Yu Darvish had six Ks in seven one-run innings and had this KO slider. We'll have pitching ninja referee Steve Willis count him out. Darvish also had these overpowering fastballs working. But my filthiest starting pitcher of the day that was Carlos Rodon. Carlos Rodon absolutely shoved. He had a 12 strikeout complete game thanks to these sliders and overpowering fastballs. In fact, he hit 99 miles an hour on his 112th pitch. That last fastball at 99 is the fastest pitch a Giants starter has ever thrown in the ninth inning. And I love this game ending K strut. Inject this straight into my veins. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Ryan Helsley had this 101 mile an hour fastball. John Schreiber had this 96 mile an hour fastball and was fired up. I interviewed John Schreiber yesterday about pitching with emotion and here's what he said. My adrenaline just goes way up whenever I start, you know, we got a close game going, high leverage situation, whatever it is, you know, home run that we hit or whatever, it's just incredible just to have that energy at the stadium and, you know, you're fired up, ready to go. And you're, you're just ready, man. You want to punch a hole in the wall. 
See, I want to punch a hole in the wall right now, dude, talking to you. I just love this. <laughs> Cue the trumpets. Edwin Diaz had this slider and overpowering fastball, picking up two Ks. He's now struck out over 50% of the hitters he's faced this year. Matt Brash was back in the big leagues and had this filth. Henesis Cabrera had these fastballs, and check out his fielding positions here, just like we teach it. Ninja tip, if they're not going to hit it, you don't have to worry about fielding it. Felix Bautista and Jorge Lopez were overpowering for the Orioles. And Andres Munoz absolutely overwhelmed Tapia and Springer here on six consecutive pitches. Untouchable. Lastly, minor leaguer Andrew Moore had this amazing Bohemian Rhapsody fastball. Mama, he just killed him. Didn't a man. hit him. Kind of thought it did. It was 97 up near the shoulders. And now, my pitching ninja moment of zen. Just when you thought you've seen everything. Sends a fly ball deep left field. Benintendi up, and it's over. Oh. It, is it gone? No, stuck. it's stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck, stuck in, in the, the wall. Wall. Double. top of the padding. What is up, Ninja Nation? My picks of the day today are for Nick Lodolo to have eight Ks or more and for Ty Walker to have eight Ks or more. Here's the current line on those. In his last outing, Lodolo had eight Ks in four and two-thirds innings and looked really good. And Ty Walker's also been pitching really well, and I expect a big game out of him. What would your picks of the day be?